Hello everyone. So today we will be learning a little bit of geometry and we will learn a couple of concepts related to circles. Then we will use these concepts to solve a problem which is Math Olympiad standard. Uh, in fact, this problem is from AMC 10A 2018 which is the American Mathematics Competition. It's a Math Olympiad in the United States. So first we will learn the concepts. What are these concepts? The first concept is really simple. It's possible that many of you know this, that tangent radius relation. And the second thing that we will learn is a center collinearity given by tangency given by tangency it's a very simple idea but it's extremely useful when you solve problems so we will learn both of these things The first thing, the tangent radius relation, which I said most of you know, is the following. That if you have a circle and if you have a tangent to the circle, then let's draw the center, let's call it O and suppose the point of tangency is T and the tangent itself is Tm. So I just made a point on the tangent and I call it M. So TM is the line that is tangent to the circle. Now if you don't know what a tangent is, it's a line that touches the circle at exactly one point. So at it's external to the circle. Okay. So maybe I could make this a little bit smaller to make some space. Okay. And take this a little bit higher. Okay. Now this um Let's join the segment OT, that is the center and the point of tangency. And this is the claim that OT is perpendicular to TM. This radius is perpendicular to tangent. Many of you know this as a fact from geometry. Um, I always prefer a little bit of proof why something is working is kind of more important than exactly the fact. So why is the tangent um, perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency? It's a very there is a very interesting argument for that. Let's take a point outside the tangency point which is let's say T1. We will show that OT1 is not perpendicular to the tangent thereby indirectly showing that OT is perpendicular because there is at least one perpendicular from a point to a line that's an axiom there is exactly one perpendicular from a point to a line external to the point and if no other segment is perpendicular if I choose T1 arbitrarily outside t different from t let's say different from t and if i show that ot1 is not perpendicular to the tangent then clearly ot will be okay so why is ot1 not perpendicular well uh, we will show that ot1 is larger than ot but how will that help because there is another definition of perpendicularity and that is perpendicular is the shortest distance is the shortest distance or shortest path from a point to a line so if you have a point and if you have a line 
the shortest path from the point to the line is the perpendicular path. That's the definition of perpendicularity, in fact. We will use that definition. We will show that OT is, in fact, shorter than any OT1 if T1 is different from the point of tangency. And that's very easy because OT1 is clearly larger than the radius and OT is equal to the radius. So this is larger, always larger than OT. So OT is, in fact, the shortest path from O to the tangent. And that's that gives us the proof that OT is, in fact, perpendicular to the tangent. It's almost like a definition, you can say. Okay, now the other fact that center and collinearity is given by tangency. What is this? This is a very useful idea. And I'll use uh, a different color for it. This often comes up in a uh, problem. So if you have two circles which are tangent to each other, that is the circles are touching each other at exactly one point, we will show that the center of the two circles, O1, O2, and the point of tangency, let's say T, they all lie in the same straight line. That's the second fact. Seems like a very easy thing, but again, we are interested in the proof. So what we will do is we will do a construction. We will draw the tangent line, a line that is tangent to both the circles. Okay, great. So let's join O1T and let's join O2T. So O1T is perpendicular to the tangent line. So this is 90 degree or a right angle. And this is also perpendicular. O2T is perpendicular. We just now proved that radius is perpendicular to the tangent. For a moment, don't suppose you do not know that O1, T, O2 are on the same straight line. Pretend that they are not. That is, these two are two different segments, the green and the blue one. So O1T, we know for a fact by the previous result that this is perpendicular to the tangent and O2T is also perpendicular to the tangent. So these two perpendicular, these two right angles, they would obviously add up to a straight angle, giving, giving us the fact that O1T O2 is in fact a straight line, right? Excellent. So we have both the facts cleared up, tangent radius and center collinearity pro property. Let's use them to solve a problem. It's a very simple problem, very beautiful problem from American mathematics competition. The problem is like this. You have a circle, the large circle of radius 13. And you have two small circles, which are like this. My drawing is a little bit off. But that's kind of like that. Two equal circles with radius 5 and they're tangent to each other at a particular point. So let's call this point T. The points, these two points of tangency are A and B. So the red circles are internally tangent to the large circle, the black one. So our goal is to find AB, the length of AB with this little information. Excellent. Let's see how we can do it. So whenever you are dealing with circles and tangencies, here is a trick. You should always mark the centers of the given circles. They almost always come in handy. Okay. So this one is O suppose and this one is O1. This one is O2. Now using the tools, we know a bunch of things. For example, we know that O, O1, O2 are on the same straight line. This is by the collinearity of centers property. Okay. Now, similarly, O, O2, B are also on the same straight line. That's also collinearity of centers. In fact, O1, T, O2 is a straight line. Excellent. And let's finally join AB. Let's finally join AB. Okay, so we have two triangles here. O1, O2, O. This is the first triangle, the smaller one. And then we have the larger triangle, which is this one. 
okay so this is triangle o a b okay the first thing is that these two triangles are similar to each other why is that first notice that o o 1 the length of o o 1 this is total radius which is 13 the big radius which is 13 minus 5 the small radius right so this is 13 minus 5 and this is also 13 minus 5 which means both of these are 8 and these two are 13 of course so this means that both of these triangles are isosceles triangles and in fact they are similar so these two triangles are similar to each other why is that because of course this angle is common these two angles are equal and these two angles are also equal so if this is theta then this is 90 minus theta by 2 this is 90 minus theta by 2 this is also 90 minus theta by 2 and this is also 90 minus theta by 2 so of course the sides are proportional you can use that so these triangles are similar we are at the very last step of this problem let's use similar uh, similar triangles have proportional sides that particular property so o1 o2 by ab that is the ratio of these two sides is equal to the ratio of this one by this one so is equal to o o1 by o a okay o1 o2 by ab is equals to o o1 by o a because the sides will be proportional can you finish this problem can you give me the final answer there is just you have to just plug in the numbers now to give me the final answer and put a comment in the description or if you are in the chinta genius app then you can put the answer in the answer panel i will see you in the next one keep on doing great geometry and great mathematics and stay safe